Alright, so as promised, this is Second Thessalonians. Whoops, I accidentally closed it. <laughs> Yay, go figure <laughs> Go figure out how some whoopsie going on in the in the beginning. Yay. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great night. Um I I'm actually I don't know. My day has been it started good, but then I came home and took a nap and I didn't go to my um Monday night life group today tonight because I didn't wake up in time. And I'm hoping I can take some melatonin here in a minute and be able to go back to sleep. I'm going to pray myself to sleep. But as you can see, in this Bible I have, it says like little things at the top like that. So I'm not going to read those when I go to start. Um, I started to a second ago and I had to reset that video. <laughs> so, but anyway, this is Second Thessalonians, as promised. The second epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Thessalonians, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you breathing, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God which, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest and rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, breathe in. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and that the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself so that he is God. He's talking. They're talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist has to show himself and all of that, and all these different things have to happen and before Jesus comes back. I mean, that's just what has to happen. And... But it's coming. You best believe that. It's coming. I'm almost positive the Antichrist is already here. He just hasn't been revealed yet. But it's definitely coming. I feel it, man. So if y'all ain't right, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to get right. All right? <laughs> I'm for real. Like, don't don't sit there and think that this is, like, some kind of joke or something because it's really not. And I feel so, I feel so much for my people, my friends, and my families who don't believe in Jesus. You know, just they refuse to wake up. They refuse to, to, to get right, to, to get their life back on track the way that God intended it to be. Like, it really hurts me. <clears throat> it really hurts my spirit and it really hurts my soul. And I really do cry for them. I really do beg God to open their eyes and their hearts and their minds to him before it's too late. I really do cry 
for them. I really do boohoo cry. Like, I mean, I get so caught up in praying for my family and for my friends who don't believe. I mean, I lose it like bad. And like my mom, she'll hear me up here and she'll say something, you know, she'll sometimes she'll text me on the phone or call me and ask me if I'm okay. If I'm crying over somebody else or something and I'm like, yeah, I'm crying because, you know, such and such won't wake up. They they, they refuse to, to believe what we believe. And, you know, she's like, all you can do is keep praying for them. And I was like, well, that's what I'm doing. But, you know, that's why I'm like boohoo crying. And she's like, you know, she, I mean, they realize that I'm not like everybody else. You know, I don't want to be like everybody else. I'm glad God made me the way that I am. Like, I have a heart. I have a real heart. I use my heart, you know, um, I think that's why people take advantage of me the way they do all the time, because, you know, my angels bother their demons, and they don't like it, so, you know, they're gonna try to do anything they possibly can to bring me down to their level, but, you know, I'm smarter than them, like, I see what's going on, and yeah, I could get mad and ticked off, and you know, I just stay away from people. I just I just try to stay away from people in situations like that because usually I try to stay away. I don't always stay away. Like the other day, I was feeling really sick the other night and I should have seen it as it was a sign from God trying to warn me about things that were about to happen, but I didn't I didn't catch it in time. I didn't catch it in time. And plus, I didn't want to miss my friend's birthday. Like, I wanted to go out. And I wanted to see my other friend that I haven't seen in, I don't know, six, seven, seven years, something like that. It's been a super duper long time. So I'm glad I went out. But at the same time, I could have done without the extra stuff that I had to enjoy that night. But anyway, going back. See, this is what I do. I ramble on. I get, I get sidetracked in my little things <laughs> and then I just go off on a whole nother topic but you know I mean that's just just like my friend told me today at lunch you know sometimes that's just what happens you know that just shows to people that I really do have a heart that I really do care more about people than I do about my own self of not you know um staying on track <laughs> like I'm supposed to but sorry all right so I'm over here on chapter 2, and I think I'm at verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God? Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I had told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and he who, wait, and the mystery, wait, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the works of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen. That's what I'm saying, man. Y'all, if y'all ain't living right, man, y'all need to wake up for real. Because the time is now. I'm serious about this. Like, I'm so freaking serious about this. Like, repent from your ways. Ask God into your heart, man. Forgive yourself for, you know, being a victim to other people's demise forgive yourself for you know for you know for not for not following what you believe is right you know what i'm saying but i'm telling you if you're if you're living in sin like like real bad sin you know like you're doing super super bad things to people 
and you kind of feel guilty, but you don't feel guilty enough to stop, you need to repent. You need to fall down on your daggum knees. You need to ask God for forgiveness and you need to ask God into your heart, you know, and, and, and ask Jesus to, to light your ways and to show you which direction to take. And he will, he's always with you. He's never left you. You might not feel him right now because the devil's whispering all kind of crap in your ear, but I'm telling you, he's right there because I've gone through so much crap in my lifetime. I've done such bad, horrible things to myself and to other people. You know, I'm, I've never killed anybody, of course, but like, I mean, things that I didn't ever think that anybody would forgive me for, you know, and they have. And so, you know, the devil is a liar, man. He comes here to steal, kill, and destroy. And he sends people to come into your life to kill, steal, and destroy you. And you just got to wake up, man. You just got to wake up. You got to put on the full armor of God. And you got to ask Jesus to come into your life and be the king over your life. You know what I'm saying? And to give you guidance and to give you strength and to show you love and mercy and compassion. And he will. He will. You know, you don't have to like, even if you're on the fence about it, you know what I'm saying? He's there. If you call out to the name of Jesus, he's there. I promise he is. You know, he really, really is. I'm about to start crying, but I'm going to stop (laughs) because I don't need to do that. It just, I'm just telling you, it really, I love how he works in me. And I love how he's changed me and he's broken me so much that I am not the same person I was two or three years ago. You know, I'm not, I'm not even the same person I was three months ago. Like I change daily. I grow daily in him and in his word and his grace and in his mercy and in his love, you know, I, I, I am, a, you know, a, a work in progress and I'm definitely, definitely, definitely a hot mess. <laughs> you know, I do have a, a pretty bad potty mouth, which right now I'm definitely trying to control it. The last video, I, I don't think I said any bad words. I don't think so. And I know the, um, the other video I posted uh, a couple days ago where I was supposed to read first and second Thessalonians in that same video and I didn't instead I just did like four different prayers but um that one I definitely didn't cuss in so I'm I'm trying you know when I get super excited that's usually when I start dropping the f-bombs left and right but you know I am trying and and I have a good heart and I, I do love people and you know I try to if 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 I don't read my bible daily which a lot of the time I definitely admit that I don't I at least have a relationship with them. I'm constantly praying to Jesus and to God. And I'm always asking them for guidance and strength um, to be able to live life and get through this life in this crazy, turbulent world we live in. You know, it's like, it scares me. It really does. But you know what scares me the most? Not being with him later. (laughs) Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to be up there on judgment day and him tell me, get away from me. I do not know you. Like, that's my biggest fear, honestly, is for him to say that to me because of the things of the decisions I've made on this earth. So I'm doing everything in my power to get myself right before it's too late, you know, and, and just to be able to forgive the people that have hurt me. And the people that have hurt my fr- family and my friends, you know, it's taken me a super duper long time. I mean, it's taken me a super duper long time to forgive certain individuals that hurt my other people who, you know, I loved with every single fiber of my very being. And because of them, they're no longer here. You know, it took it took a lot for me to forgive them for doing that to him. And it it took a lot for me to forgive the people that have seriously freaking hurt me in the past, you know, that have, but that's the thing, you know, I have to, everybody has to forgive or you can't get into the kingdom of heaven. It says that in here, in this book, it says it in this book, you know, you just gotta, 
You know, I'm not saying that God is like this, this, this man or this whatever in the clouds and that's what he's doing. And he's like sitting on this white puffy cloud. I don't believe that for a very second. I don't know what he looks like. I don't even know if he's, you know, even a person at all. I don't think he is. I think that I don't know what he is. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I have so many different ideas of what, you know, and they've changed throughout the years, but I know that he made everything. He made this world and the next world and all of the worlds. He made all of the planets. He made the entire universe. I mean, he's bigger than everything. Like he created everything. And I believe that with every fiber in my very being, you know, I believe that he created, he, he, he is life and, you know, um, and I guess he is death too, because you can't have life without death. At least not right now you can't, you know, but once it's over, and we're all, you know, reunited again. It will be amazing. It will be awesome. And I mean, you know, I rather, <clears throat> I rather believe than not believe, honestly. Because I went through that period of my life where I was so angry at him. I turned from him. And that was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my entire life. Like, honestly. It has haunted me every single freaking day. It has totally broken me down so many times to where I have seriously, seriously, seriously just wanted to give up completely and not even be here anymore. But what is that going to solve? It's not going to solve anything. And then that would mean the devil had won. And I can't allow him to win. I cannot. I cannot allow him to win on this earth or in the next. And he's not allowed to have my soul. You know. But see, that's the trick he plays on us, man. He, he, he makes us believe that we're not good enough for God. That God will never forgive us of our sins. That God will 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 condemn us to hell and all of this stuff but they're just lies because he knows he's already been defeated he knows he's already been cast out of this earth he's already been cast out of heaven and he's been cast down to this earth but then he's also once you know the apocalypse happens he's gonna be cast to hell for all eternity he knows this he knows this that's why he's trying to take as many people down with him as he can right now but you got to see through his BS and you got to rise up and you got to pick up the armor of God. You got to pick up the cross and follow Jesus because that's the only way to make it through. And it's the only way. And, you know, I just, if he can save a wretched, wretched soul like me, then I know he can save you. If he could get me off alcohol and drugs, and keep me off alcohol and drugs for almost 13 years. This year will be 13 years. Then I know that he can do whatever he needs to do to transform you. From the life you're living to the life that he created you to be. So don't give up. That's all I'm going to say. Just don't give up. Just keep on. Keep on keeping on. You know. Even if you don't know how to pray. Just call out his name. Just say Jesus. 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 I need you right now. Please. Please hear my cries, Father. Please, please be with me. Please wrap your loving arms around me. Please give me peace. And he will. It might not happen exactly right when you want it. But I promise you, if you keep on talking to him, he's going he's gonna to show himself to you. He's going to reveal himself to you. Things will get better. Life will start to make, life will start to make sense to you again. Things will start to happen in your life. Things will start to move in your life that you didn't ever think was possible. Like you'll start to have a sense of peace about you. 
You know, it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes for some people, it might happen immediately. For some people, it might happen overnight. So for some people, but for me, it's a work in progress. There have been some things he has definitely transformed me overnight with. But at first he didn't. I I cried out to him for many, 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 many years to get off of alcohol and drugs. I struggled with being on alcohol and drugs for over 16 years. My entire high school career, I was under the influence of alcohol. And then the rest of my high school career, the last two years of my high school life, I was on mad drugs. And I stayed like that all the way through my 20s until I turned 30. I think I was 31 when I finally surrendered to him completely and was like, I can't do this anymore. I need you to take this from me, please. If I keep on going the rate that I'm going right now, I'm going to be dead, dead. Like, I'm not going to be able to come back. I'm not. I'm I'm not going to be able to come back from this. Like, you know, I don't. I don't want people to remember me as being a drug addict. I don't want people to not remember who I was as a person and all the good things I've done for people and all the awesome things I've done and and the way that I was. You know what I'm saying? I don't want people to remember just the bad negative things about me. And that's why I changed my ways because I didn't want to be a statistic. It's horrible how people do each other after they pass away from drugs or alcohol it's absolutely heart-wrenching you know I have so many friends so many family members who have overdosed and died from drugs or have got cirrhosis of the liver from their horrible um alcohol addiction you know and it's taken them out because they got cirrhosis of the liver and died or worse you know their body just completely shut down and they couldn't they couldn't function anymore and they just like withered away and and you know only me and like a couple of people you know actually remember good things about them about their life and who they were before they started drinking or before they started drugging but mostly everybody else that, that I talked to all they can recall is all the bad things that they did all the horrible things that they did while they were drinking and drugging. And they, they don't, and it, it breaks my freaking heart, man. It really does because that's not who they were. They were, they were lost and they were broken and they were sick. They were sick in their addiction. But it doesn't have to be like that. And I know I got off topic again. <clears throat> but, you know, it's just, it's just, I just get these things in my spirit where I just feel like, you know, God wants me to share, and so that's why I share. You know, I'm not I'm not condemning anybody. Like we all we all fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. Every single person on this planet does. None of us are perfect. But the thing is, you know, and, and none of us can be perfect while we're here on this earth. And none of us can. <clears throat> we can do things more. <clears throat> excuse me we can do things more we can we we can better ourselves we can hope to strive to be excuse me not not exactly perfect because perfect is impossible it will drive you completely mad if you're trying to strive to be perfect but strive to be better strive to be better than you were especially if you were living in sin or you were, you know, doing things that you know are not right. You know what I'm saying? Like, strive, you know, just take it one day at a time. If you have to break it down to one second at a time, then do that. But, you know, and, and, and don't rush yourself. Pace yourself. Don't try to make everything happen in one day. Because you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're probably going to relapse. <laughs> And, it's, and, and, then, and then you're just going to keep beating yourself up about it, you know? And I think that's why, you know, honestly, I think that's why so many people give up. Because they try to do it all in one day. And they're too hard on themselves. And they don't just take it one day at a time. They don't just break it down, you know? You, you can use the 12 steps for anything and everything that you're facing in life. I do it all the time. 
And I'm not on anything at all. I'm 100% straight edge. I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't have sex. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I am 100% straight edge. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I actually prefer it a whole lot better because I have a sense of peace over me. I mean, yeah, there, there are things that bother me. But, you know, I just try to pray about it. I just give it to God. I just turn it over to him. And I say, hey, take this from me. This is what this is. Here, take this. Like, I can't do this anymore by myself. You know, like, I feel like I'm falling apart. You know, can you please guide me? Can you please tell the devil to leave me alone? You know, and then I just rebuke him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I just rebuke him and I cast him out. And I tell him that he has no, um, he has no power over me. He has no right to be anywhere near me, that I am a child of light, and that I plead the blood of Jesus over me, and that, you know, I break these bonds that that, that Satan and his, his legions are trying to take me down to their level with, you know, no, no, I release myself from, from that and from that lifestyle, and, and anybody and everybody is trying to take me down to their level that is sent from the devil to destroy me, to kill me, to to steal from me, to lie to me, to trick me, to deceive me. No, I cast them all out and away from me. They're not allowed to be in my life. They're not allowed to be a part of me. I I am not playing with people anymore. Like, it's not worth it. It's really not. And, um, you know, you just got to stand your ground, man. You just got to stand your ground. It's hard. It is definitely, definitely hard. But it's worth it in the end. It really is. So just, just stay strong. And God sees you. He does. He sees you. He's right there with you. So don't ever think that you don't have anybody because you do. Don't listen to the devil because he's a liar. All right. <clears throat> but I think that's a good one because look, it says stand fast. Mm. <laughs> but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, breathing, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, breathe and stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught whether by word or by our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and has given us everything, has given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every word, good word and work. Finally, breathe and pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. But we command you, breathe in, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the trad tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. 
But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Amen. Now may the word now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle. So I write the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. So see exactly what I said a second ago goes right with what I just read. And see, that's the power of God. You know? He's amazing. <clears throat> he really is. And, you know, just like earlier, what I was talking with my with my friend about um, <clears throat> when we had brunch earlier and we had our Bible study, um, you know, I was telling him then, I was, you know, talking to him about stuff. And then whenever we um, decided to go and... Um, when we when we decided to go and uh we we decided to read um Colossians and it went straight exactly with what we were talking about before that. You know? So like I said before, God is good. He always knows. Um <clears throat> He always knows. what we need before we even need it and you know he's always given me signs and and different things to um he's always giving me different things you know when he wants me to you know if i'm if i pray you know inside my head to him about some things and he'll always give me different signs as confirmation of what we just talked about, you know, and just like right here, when I was talking to you about, you know, um, demons tricking you and stuff, um, <clears throat> you know, it says, it says right here, it says demons will keep a low pro profile until they are confronted. Once you expose them, their strategy will change to power. If you move too fast in the process, the person may try to flee in fear. And that's true. And then it says, um, some people experience internal interference when demonic powers are stirred up by the truth. They may become dizzy or gassy eyed. If you proceed without regard for the reaction, there they may lapse into catatonia. The goal in helping people find freedom in Christ is to avoid all demonic activity which would short-circuit their ability to participate in the process. With this in mind, I usually begin the steps to freedom with a prayer similar to this. So I'm going to read this prayer just because, and then I'm going to get off here, I think. And it also says right here at the bottom, it says, Make sure they understand that their opposing thoughts are Satan's and not their own. If they feel the thoughts are theirs, they will be embarrassed to share them. Yeah, and this is from that, that bondage breaking book that I'm that I was talking about in the other video. Um like I said, I, I've been going through it. I haven't actually read it completely yet because it's hard for me to to just sit down and just read, just read a book anymore. I don't even, I, I know it's got to be the devil that's, that's causing it. Um, I used to read it all the time, all the time I used to read. And I I have so many books I've started and I haven't finished any of them. <laughs> it's horrible. It really is. But, alright, so this prayer says, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by virtue of his shed blood, I acknowledge your presence in this room and in our lives. I declare my absolute dependence on you from for apart 
from Christ, I can do nothing. I take my position with Christ, seated with him in the heavenlies. Because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him, I now claim that the authority over all enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ in and around this room, and especially in... And especially in me, you have told us that, that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst, and that whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. We agree that every evil spirit that is in or around me be bound to silence. They cannot inflict any pain, speak to me, my mind, or prevent me from hearing, seeing, or speaking. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you, Satan, and all your hosts to release me and to remain bound and gagged so that I will be able to obey God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, you know it's not like I said before you know it 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 takes it takes it takes a while you know sometimes it happens immediately you know sometimes it happens immediately sometimes I feel like a whole veil's been lifted off me immediately you know like immediately and then other times I don't, you know, when, when, when the problem is something that is rooted so deeply, you know, that there's so many layers of it, then no, I, I don't have release immediately. I have to keep asking for the same thing over and over again, or I might add extra stuff to it, but I have to constantly stay in a constant prayer with God and, and almost beg him kind of to to release release that bondage to break those bondages that I have and and all of that and you know but I find that you know my days get easier and 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 through time I don't think about the stuff as much that I did before you know but it's just like whenever you go to get sober it's the same thing it doesn't happen overnight you know you got to work at it it's a it's a process you have to do it you have to throw yourself into it like when 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 you go to get sober you know um however you go to get sober like with me i had to go to rehab um i tried i did get sober by myself three times beforehand um for a couple of years in between but then the last time after kevin died i just i went crazy man i just lost it completely and uh you know, I started having, I started having many streaks in my sleep and that's what, that's what really made me want to stop drinking and drugging is when I, cause I did not want to be remembered as being a drug addict. If, if ever I would have passed away for real, for real, I did not, um, want that. I didn't want my parents to, you know, have to have that burden. You know, I've hurt them long enough is the way I felt about it. And I didn't want um, other people to remember that about me. So, you know, but it, you know, it was, it was definitely a struggle. I mean, it, like I said, it didn't happen overnight and you ha- I had to work at it every single day. I had to work at it. I went to rehab. I, I was serious about my recovery and getting sober. And I took two notebooks down there with me and I filled up both notebooks in the first, like, two weeks I was there and I had to get them my parents to bring me another notebook and I filled that one up too with notes that I took um of classes that lasted all daggum day long and um there was mad videos after video after video after video we watched and I took mad notes um I was constantly taking notes I was constantly even when I got out of rehab I reread those notes for months for years after that I did I still have the notebook somewhere. I mean, occasionally I'll I'll find them and like go back through and reread them, you know, just to see what all I wrote. But um, <clears throat> and I have just about every single A and NA book known to man, and 
occasionally I'll I'll bust one of them out and start reading again. Um, even though I'm completely, I have no desire whatsoever to ever drink or drug again. Like I don't, and you know I beg God to take that from me to to break that of me, and He did. But like I said, it it it, it took a lot. It took a lot, and it took complete surrender. I had to 100% not just mean what I say and say what I mean and to prove to him that this is what I wanted a gazillion percent. But I had to completely surrender myself and my will over to him. And that's what you do when you have to surrender. You know, you can't half-ass it. Because when you half-ass it, you're bound to relapse. Whatever it might be. It might not be a drug or a drink that, that, that you're you know, thinking about when I'm saying all this, but, you know, whatever it is, like, you have to surrender completely. Everything you have, everything it took you to get to that point to make you want to do whatever you're doing that you know is wrong, you have to take that and push it towards you getting the right amount of help that you need to transform yourself in a positive way to be a better person and it'll happen you just got to keep on keeping on and keep talking to him and keep praying for yourself and and praying for other people and you know if you have to go to a or na or any other kind of meeting or church or whatever then go you know um some people like to do the zoom thing i personally do not like to do the zoom thing i will if i have to but I'm hands-on, man. I like to be, like, I like to be right there talking, interacting with somebody, like, face-to-face. And I guess, technically, this is kind of like a Zoom thing, except you don't see me at all because I ain't going to show my face. I hate cameras. (laughs) I don't mind people taking pictures if, like, there's me and my friend or something, but, you know, I mean, occasionally I'll take a selfie of myself or something like that, but as for videos, like me being on camera on video, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> you just gotta, you know, we're all in this together. Like I say repeatedly in all of my videos, we're all in this together. And we might as well, since we're all stuck on this daggum spinning rock together we might as well make the best of it and love one another the best we can and forgive each other the best we can and and try to do right by each other the best we can and try to help each other out however we can and just truly love each other like I'm not saying you have to be in love with anybody like you don't I'm not but you know I mean okay I am in love with Jesus that's the main person I'm in love with because without him, I would be nothing. I would have nothing. You know, he, he went through all the hardships that he went through his entire life to die on that cross for me and for you and for everybody else on this planet, you know? So just, um, just go out there and do something nice for somebody without them asking you for it. Just go do something unexpected for somebody, you know. Just be nice to each other. Pray for each other. Love each other. Be there for each other, you know. And I'm not saying you have to do it every single day, you know. But it's all about the little things in life. Because those little things in life turn out to be something really big in life for somebody else. They really do. And... Just keep on keeping on. God bless you all. Talk to you all later. Peace.